All right, if you clicked on this video, you probably know Dave Portnoy, founder of Russell Sports, El Prez, as they call him. He bought back the company for a dollar from Penn National and then eventually goes on after a month firing about 100 people, 25% of the company, I think. What happened there? I actually like Russell Sports. I respect Dave Portnoy. I respect anyone who can start companies, build companies, hire people. So this is not a diss want to be really clear all right so what's the tldr the tldr is that dave portnoy founder of barstool sports he buys his company back from penn national which bought barstool from him for about 500 million dollars it's a lot of money and portnoy gets the company back for less to nothing a dollar so it's not exactly a sale it's a divestment because we had no fucking idea how much work it is to run a news brand which is so edgy and that's in its core we don't want to deal with the stock value going up and down based on whether or not a hit piece came out on dave portnoy this week so they didn't want all that variable in their business let's say so what was the resolution they decided to partner with espn so all the suits at espn they get to do the news and pen they become their gambling arm and dave portnoy you get your pirate ship back Barcelona sports everything that you created brick by brick for so many years that's yours now for a dollar that was the deal so from the outside it looks like the vibes were high right because you know Barstool gets to be edgy again Barstool gets to be uncensored again they don't have to deal with pen the suits telling them what to say or what not to say they get to be the old Barstool but unfortunately a month later layoffs I want to answer like the two big questions who and why who are the kind of people who got fired and why exactly the layoffs happen in the first place mass layoffs in the media world and in the tech world as well happen mostly because of like profitability reasons when a smaller company is usually getting acquired gets venture backed what it technically means is that you don't have to worry about being profitable the entire focus is on getting the stock price higher in this case penn national stock price higher it doesn't really matter whether or not the company is in red or black as long as the investors know that when times come for an ipo or selling the company again they all get to make more money than they put in because the valuation is higher so for barstool sports case all they had to focus on was getting more followers more viewers more numbers more likes all that stuff profitability was not a concern all right i'll give you a comparable example lemonade stands we don't have any money as kids so where exactly does all that come from my parents bought the lemons my parents bought the stands the ice the sugar the water the cups it didn't really matter how much money i'm making because at the end of the day i know that my parents paid for the whole thing that's kind of the game here you were able to sell the lemonade for just a dollar because your parents didn't really mind the loss because you know what they love you hopefully and you get to just have fun for a weekend that was the play barstool sports parents in this case was penn national obviously and they were letting them have fun by hiring newsletter writers the 19th podcast about relationship advice and a bunch of other stuff which the core barstool audience never really cared about nor did those pay the bills and penn didn't mind paying for all of that because penn national treated barstool sports like treating growth projects big companies acquire media companies because they want to get the name out of whatever the cause they have in penn's case this is gambling so penn was never looking to make money via barstool you barely make money by buying media companies or by owning media companies it's about something bigger it happens a lot in political media i'll give you an example there were a lot of people who are like old boomers they have made a lot of money during the oil era and the coal era or whatever so they're like hyper rich and they have a cause which is they want to push conservatism so what they do is that they buy conservative small media companies and you know then that becomes their PR arm for whatever cause they want to propagate in their case it's conservatism on the other side of the aisle for progressive it happens when like rich people who have made money in EV or tech stuff like that they want to push progressivism and they want to buy small media companies which is run by two goals in Portland and you know that's their cause I'm not judging any side here but I'm just saying that's why people buy media companies and Penn bought Barstool because their whole cause is gambling their whole bet is like yes we are losing all this money right now but eventually when all the gambling restrictions get lifted people would have already known about Penn because of Barstool Sports reach Barstool Sports clout Barstool Sports is the medium through which we want to propagate Penn's name and that kind of justifies Penn National being able to lose money in the present because in the future they will make money hand over fist once betting restrictions are lifted. That's the play here. Now think about it. When a normal dude is taking a job at Barstool, he's not thinking about all this. Everyone likes to think that their jobs are important and only they can do their job but it's not exactly true. This guy probably has no idea whether or not his job is a fluff job or is a job which is core to the company's profitability. Now, hypothetically, this is all obviously speculation. When Dave got the company back, he probably looked at the payroll and they saw two kinds of people they wanted to fire. First would be the kind of people who were hired by Penn just to kind of push gambling. 
gambling newsletters, gambling email, gambling marketing, because that's all Penn cared about from Barstool, right? So Dave was like, yeah, I don't really need these people here anymore. You were hired for a job which no longer exists. So that would be one. And the second would be the obvious one, which is slackers. Again, I do not know to what extent that can be true because there is no insight on what were the exact positions of the people who were hired. But that's kind of my guess here. And now comes the lesson part. What are the lessons here? So first of all, caveat, I'm just a 27 year old dude. I work in media. I work in news. I work in politics. I also own a business which does production and stuff like that. So this is from a point of view of someone who has worked with a lot of entrepreneurs in media and have seen exactly how the hiring and firing and building a core team works. So that's where I'm coming from. And I'm just sharing my insights and kind of molding those based on what I just explained about Barstool. All right. Having said that, every media company, every business, and actually things in life actually operate in like 80-20 rule. What does that mean? It basically means 20% of people generate 80% of the results. 20% of the athletes put in most of the points on the board, touchdown, goals, whatever. 20% of criminals commit most of the crimes. In a media company, there are 20% of the people who bring in most of the eyeballs. So in Barcelona Sports case, the 20% would be KFC. The 20% would be Port Noise Pizza Reviews. The 20% would be Call Her Daddy. Ow, ow, ow. The 20% would be, I don't know, like pardon my take, the most popular sports podcast in America. That's how you're able to afford podcasts and content creators and bloggers who do not necessarily bring in the bacon, but they are good to have because you want to go to advertisers and investors and be like, hey, we have a diverse set of content creators, which brings a diverse set of eyeballs. So because we have a dating show, which is not as good as pardon my take, but because we have a dating show, we can now target you know young girls or like teen girls or like 20 something girls who just started college and they want to learn about dating or whatever and that's the value of that it's not exactly the mass reach it's kind of like the niche market reach and that's good that's good that's what bundling effect gets you like so i think about this you need the steak right the steak is the staple you don't really care about size asparagus mashed potatoes cranberries all that stuff i'm just thinking about thanksgiving sides now aren't i but anywho so like steak you need the steak asparagus you want the asparagus that's kind of like the analogy here you don't really need those things but steak is what keeps the lights on so when portnoy came back at the company he looked at the pnl sheet and he was like hey we are losing a lot of money we are losing millions every month we can't really afford to do that and i mean maybe he can because he has a lot of money like he personally has a lot of money from the sale of barstool but if you want to keep the lights on on a business you kind of have to give a shit about profitability and not just revenue unless you're a giant tech company and portnoy was like hey we are not backed by a giant conglomerate like penn national anymore so we kind of have to you know tighten the ship people who we don't need you don't really have a job here anymore since we are no longer pushing betting as a core thing we don't really need betting newsletter writers we can't really afford to have a documentary editor who edits documentaries about something which is not exactly about sports but it's like it's whatever it's, it's a good piece of content but it's not parcel sports and he just wants that core mo to come back and like you know you can't really blame a businessman for you know caring about business that's kind of what the goal is now i'm talking to you Let's say you are a 20 something kid who wants to step into the world of media, entrepreneurship, whatever. Be really conscious of how your role fits into the larger structure. You want to work, I, in, my, in my opinion, you want to work in smaller companies which care about productivity and where you will learn a lot of things which would then help you become really good at one of those things down the line in your career. I'm not talking about engineers, lawyers and stuff like that. In media, today, you kind of have to know how to be your own producer, how to be your own cameraman, how to be your own editor, how to write script, how to talk to cameras and all that stuff. If you want to work in the world of broadcast cameras or whatever, I would recommend not working for big multinational media companies because then you would be doing a really niche thing which they have a need for in that very moment where you got hired, right? Five years down the line, three years down the line, let's say the PL changes for them, you no longer might be necessary. Then you would have to start all over again, learn one skill from scratch. That's not good. You will be in a really bad situation then. So start with smaller media companies and hopefully kind of grind out the phase where you don't make a lot of money in your early 20s because you wouldn't. The unpaid internships and all that stuff, that's real. Go through that phase, but learn a lot of skills 
like editing, like producing, like camera work, like sound design, like lighting, like doing bullshit set work. Learn all of that. It's really good to know all of that and having all of that in your arsenal. So in the case when one of those is not necessary for the company, you will be like, hey, I know a bunch of things. I can do this as well. And you probably don't have to pay me that much money in the beginning, but I want to ride the wave with you guys. So that's how you kind of like bring value writ large. And once you do enough of those for years and years and years, you become really good at one of those things. Then you can either choose to become like a mid-level manager at a big company or kind of, you know, start your own thing. There are plenty of opportunities in the creator economy today to kind of like start from scratch, a production company, whatever. But the TLDR is, you know, it's okay to start small. All right, cool. Thanks. Bye.